morning. Right, welcome. Happy Monday, everyone. Um, this is the start of the entry industry week. Throughout the week, we've been lucky enough to uh, manage to get some industry leaders in to come and show you some stuff that you wouldn't necessarily see at college normally and certainly you won't see out in the industry. Um, today we're joined by Johnny Putsai and his uh, talented team. They're going to show you some whole beef carcass butchery. At my shop we do everything the old fashioned way. We're one of the few butchers that still do it. We have nothing coming in boxes. Everything comes in as a carcass in the back door and it goes out the front door as a product. Whether it's sausage, black pudding, pork pies, pies, anything, even here dried meats, bacon, we do it ourselves. So we're very labour intensive. So what we're going to do, Stevie, I want you to take some muscle boot coat off. Mm -hmm. What that means is meat on the bone and it's for stewing or, you know, you can braise it. It's a fantastic cut. And again, in a moment, Jolly will be working on to other things. So Stevie's going to take this off. What he's doing at the minute is cutting through the shin. When you butcher, you're always taught if you've got a good uh, boss, you never saw the meat. You always cut the meat and saw the bone. So what you'll see Steve do is, every time he's finished sawing the bone, he will then pick his knife up and then he will cut. He will not saw the meat because what you do, you pass on all the bacteria from the saw. And once you've got that sawdust, if that goes on to a primal cut, whether it be shin of beef, whether it be steak, it will send it off, it will send it discoloured. And then the bacteria will spread very quickly. We don't want that. I'll have that when you finish with Cedar, please. Right here, if any of you get the chance of getting one of these, get it into a stock pot. Don't buy your stocks. I don't know what restaurants you work at, but you should all have a stock pot on. And if you're dealing with a good butcher, he should, and he's breaking down, he should have loads of marrow bones, he should have rib bones. If he hasn't, and he says to you, oh, I'm sorry, you can't have any bones, that means he's buying box meat in. You don't want it. So, here we go. If this is done, it's done for about two, four hours. That's done with him. I'll do that, you just mock him off. If this is done for about four hours in a nice pan, or pressure cooking, I believe, is a big thing now. We've got the Michelin star chefs again. And apparently what that does is keep the flavouring more so than if you just do it in an open pan. But what we do at the shop, we lay it out like this, and the reason we lay it out like this is, I actually sell dead body parts, so I've got to try and make it look attractive, haven't I? Get all these young ladies, who want chefs like you to come into the shop to buy. And the other thing is, obviously, if I'm losing bone on it, I'm getting more profit, aren't I? So, it is a fantastic thing that Jamie and those have done for us. Will you get one more after that, Chef? Yeah, I'm good on you, brother. Call him Chef now, he's a butcher. So, this animal that you can see is a female animal. It's a cross between a Belgian blue and a Hereford. And that's why it's not huge. A lot of the, we've got a lot of the uh, European animals coming out, which is Chalet, Belgian blue and limousine. We don't do that. We cross ours with the Hereford. And it gives us this nice, smaller frame. And what we want is, we want a lot of carcass with little bone. Thank you. Okay, you can take your shoulder off now. You know, you chuck that over to it. Yeah. You got your stuff on, Joel? So, what was I saying? Yeah, so this is a Hereford blue cross. It's a female. The reason we don't like steer meat in my shop is, a lot of butchers like steer meat because it's very lean. I don't like that. I love covering the fat on. That's where your flavour comes from. The other thing is, this will not have carved. With it being a heifer, it may have carved once, but mine haven't. And what that means is all the goodness is still in the meat. Whereas somebody says, who said it out there? It's half a cow. Somebody did. Put your hand up, guys. Yeah, it's not half a cow. If it's cow meat, that what goes into your production, like your really cheap, nasty pies... Because if you try to eat cow, you would be chewing it for two months. Because cows give calf, it's calf two or three times, and then all the goodness has gone to the 
all the goodness and the bones are hard, the meat's very lean because it's been sucking on its mother. It's not good. Right, so this is a heifer. If you guys look it up, beef, beef comes from France, the Normans. That's where we've sort of got back from. If you look back, anybody goes, I bet a lot of you are rich and so you probably go abroad where you see all these paintings on the walls from thousands of years ago. Man have always had beef. As long as it's been out there, we've butchered it and we've done what we've done to it. The Saxons, we have cow, which is what it is, but we don't like the word cow because as I've just explained. Right, Jolly's got a shoulder now. Now Jolly's going to be using this shoulder. This is going to go in our mints and in our stew. And again, at my shop, I don't mind a little bit of fat because I know when you cook it down, that fat's going to dissolve. And if we look, would you pass that around and feel it? How lovely! Squeeze it between your fingers, touch it. Don't be shy of it, guys. You guys are going to be in the catering trade, or you're in the catering trade. Feel it. That is lovely and moist. It's silk-like. It's not slimy. It's not horrible. Look at these faces. What's going on? What are you going to do when you get a piece of sirloin and you put it on the block and you've got to butcher it yourself? Are you going to pull them faces? Right, I'll pull him over here. I'm going to turn him over. So, we've got the neck here. I'll take, I'll start the neck off for Jolly. You're right there, Steve, you know. So, this is the neck. Who's heard of braising steak? This is going to be your braising steak. Now, this, if you do it in the oven, I'd rather have this in a piece of sirloin, or fillet, or rump, or even your rub-eye, because it is full of flavour. And here, again I'm not going to pass it around because some of you will go dizzy, won't you? But this is what we're going to be using, Jolly is in a moment, going to finish boning this off for us, and this is the neck. Now when we do this, it's such an intricate piece because we have to get around the bone, and we have to pull through. And if any of the meat's left on this, boy, the old boy at the shop goes nuts. Can you take the brisket off that one, Steve? Pass me the shoulder, please. Let's have a look, see if you want to do a job. That's brilliant. So, what we're going to do now is take this apart, and we're going to use it for mints. And as I've said, we can leave the fat in there, but what we can't leave in there is the gristle. There's a difference between gristle and fat. Gristle's very chewy and the fat's very soft. So all this will go into the top of the mincer. And again, I've got to make this look pretty so that when that lady comes through the shop, she's thinking, my goodness, I want to buy that because I want to make a little shoe. And again, we've got a bit of fat in, nothing wrong with that. We want some fat. Normally at the shop, don't it. Normally at the shop we do have uh, probably kidneys that go down there. Do we know what kidneys are for guys in the animal? Anybody know? The kidneys for clearing the way out. And yeah, once that's been cleaned out, and it's put in a steak and kidney pie, there's probably nothing that's got such an intricate flavour. Liver, kidney, lungs, the hearts, all these things are very, very sought after in the kitchen. So what Steve is doing now, has anybody, uh, you've heard of brisket, salted beef? This is the cook that's being used for it. And what, we, what Steve is going to do is take the front half off and then pass me... Pass me the back end, Steven. There you go. The cow? The beef? That's a fantastic question. Anybody remember a thing called BSE? No, it's probably before your day. BSE, it was a form of mad cow disease. And what happened up until then, we could slaughter in this country at any age. Now, through that, uh, we have to slaughter at 36 months old. You can slaughter before that, but the limit is 36 months because that's when they say it's safe up until. In England, we've got probably the highest and the best quality for our animals anywhere in, not just Europe, but the world. 
So when it starts at the farmer, the farmer has vet checks, whether it's lamb beef or pork, then it goes through to the slaughterhouse, and it's just the same. They have all these checks that make it so that when you've got it, one, it's safe, and two, which I think is very important, that the animal's welfare has been incredibly looked after. So 36 months is the legal age, but you can sort it before that. Who's heard of Bill? Bill? Bill, that's it, very young. And what happens with there, we used to have it in this country where the cattle was bred for milk. You had to have the baby before the mother could lactate to get the milk going. But what used to happen is, in this country, for some reason, we didn't think the veal was good, so we just slaughtered it and it went into wherever. Whereas in Europe, they look after the veal and they've made a great trade and it's stopped coming to this country now. I think you'll find it's called roast veal. Right, what I'm going to do is slice this here. And this is your flat rib or, or your brisket back end. So, again, four. Who's heard of the restaurant? Reds. Reds, what a great place. That's what they will be putting into their barbecue. And then you have it with a short rib on. This will go over for Joel that you do in a moment. There you go, Joel. That'll go over for there. But then what we'll do with this is... And I guarantee that if you have that on a smoked barbecue for a while, that will be impressive. All that fat's going to break down, all the gelatin, it's going to be amazing. Probably once about six hours. I did a shoulder report yesterday at home. This is from the shoulder, and the breakdown of it is just lovely. And then they put a sticky kind of barbecue sauce on it, and it makes it good. Anybody heard of a tomahawk steak? That is the new thing. And this is basically it. This is what in our country we call the rib or the chine. But uh, again, this is what's going to go into our mince. And this will make, if you look at that, all that breakdown of the fat. If you have mince, go and have it too lean. Because you know if you have it lean, first thing, it goes very watery. The second thing is, less flavour. So you've got to probably have an 80-20%. That's what I'd say to make a good shepherd's pie or lasagna or anything. 80-20% mix. Right. So that's gone. So if you imagine, you cut that in half. I'm not going to cut it because it's very soft. This is too fresh. Anybody heard of the terminology hung beef? Matured beef. Do you know how long beef's hung for before it starts breaking down? That's the fibres. What did you say? Fantastic. That's exactly it. That's the start of all the fibres and the proteins breaking down. However, at my shop, we do it for 50 days. Now, what this is, there's a thing that they call it wet aging. And instead of it hanging like that, I mean, that would normally be hung at our shop in the fridge. We have them all hanging. Anybody who ever wants to come up, have a word with Sam. You're more than welcome to come and have a look around the shop. We hang it and you get a drip off it. Whereas what they do, the supermarkets, they call it wet aging, and they leave it in. Have you heard of a vacuum pack or a cryovac bag? Yeah. How can that be good when something's laying in its own blood? It can't. Whereas if it's like that and it's hanging, all the moisture's going out. It loses one percent a day apparently. So fifty days, and uh, we supply the incredible chef Saturdays, and he will only have it at between fifty and ninety days home. So, that's pretty. So, here we go. Getting back to the slaughtering of the animal. Our slaughtermen in this country. Oh, fantastic. Oh, Stevie. Can you see that as a giant? Eh? Can you imagine that coming to the table? I'm not even going to cut that. That takes some beating. We mentioned the slaughtering. Our slaughtermen. It first starts with the farmers. Our farmers are amazing. The guys who I use. And then we go... And it's very sad that we haven't now got a slaughterhouse in Nottingham. We have to take our animals to Chesterfield. How sad's that? This should be a government thing. Perhaps your college will get on to the government. Here we go, river beef. Quintessentially British. The best beef, ba beef joint in the world. Do you think that looks nice? I wouldn't want it. Guess why? No fat. 
So it's going to break down, it's going to cook. I'm not going to grumble about it, but I wouldn't like it. I would much rather have a rib off there. Steve is now doing the chuck. Now the chuck is an amazing piece. How are we doing, Jolly? Good, yeah, looking good. Good. good lad. Now what Joel is doing, he's rolling it. We're rolling the fat inside, so as it cooks, it's going to cook with that sort of uh, fat in between, and it's going to go like a gelatine. Uh, again, a very old-fashioned cut, the brisket. Coming more into, one through the Americans, such as Red Rub, Bill Smokehouse. These kind of places have brought these to the forefront again. They do a lot dry rub of cayenne pepper, paprika. They put it in, put it in foil, a little bit of moisture in there. Cook it for again. Some of them do it for 12, 24 hours when it comes out. And it is, you've heard of pulled pork. Well, that's basically pulled beef. Right. I'm too quick talking, guys. These can't keep up with me. So, in fact, pass us that over here, please, Steve, that joint. And I'll, uh, John, how long did it take you to tie, uh, learn to tie like that? It takes because, again, we're, we're at my shop, it's a very condensed place. So it's not a big place in the back. So you've got Steve there, me there, two of the butchers. Joel is in the middle of it. So how long did it take you, Joel? What to learn how to tie not about a day. Hmm. Because, guess what? You do it. And... If you don't get all the knots in a line, which I'll check in a minute, if he hasn't got all the knots in a line, he'll be doing it again. If the knots all launch, if the lines all launch straight, it's doing it again. And that's how you learn. That's how it's a very repetitive way of learning. Might sound boring, but it's got to be done. Because when we put that joint in that window, and Mrs. Smith comes to pay me ten pounds, as well as it tasting nice, it's got to look nice. There's got to be a story behind it. It can't be. A rubbish story, it's got to be factual. And everything we do in our shop is factual. If you, anybody comes in our shop, you'll see a big telly up on the wall in the shop. That goes to the smokehouse. It goes to the back where we do all the butcher. And it goes into the cellar where we cure the bacon. And it goes into the development kitchen upstairs. Where one of us, every day, a week, goes up there to develop. Whether it's a new sausage or a new burger or a new pie or a new black pudding. Something new. All of us have this, it's, and it's what we do, it's what we love doing. Right, so what I'm going to do here, who's heard of feather steak? Yeah. yeah, that's another one that's just come. They used to call this poor man's fillet because at one time some of the naughty butchers would make out that this was fillet steak because it's cone shaped. Yeah, but you know if you cook it, it's going to be sure ass. But again, We've, We've got, got it down, down to, to, if we, we cut, cut it down, down the centre, and, and this is where it gets its name from, it gets its name feather steak because of this. So, so it's like a feather. feather. I, again, I'm not a big fan of it. Who's heard of fat iron steak? Anybody? Yeah. Again, it's from here, and there's a massive bristle here, and if you wish to cut this, I'm showing it, I'm checking this out for you. Come in, come in. You see it? That piece of gristle. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. So if you yeah. wish to chew on that, if it had been done medium rare, you're alright. Yeah, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. But again, put it in. Put it in a, uh, a crock pot or a smoker, and it's going to be incredible. Right, and here we've got. I was telling you. This about having fat. This is our raising steak, but I guarantee if I put that on a barbecue, whether it's charcoal or gas, you guys would be amazed by it. Because, look, let me show you. That's how soft it is. So it pulls apart. Yeah, that's. I'd like you guys to try some of this meat that you're doing, that you are using, which come in and try that bag and try that with. I don't think it would work. So, we do this, and if we are right, because the chine, which is the tomahawk steak, comes so far into this, you can actually grill that, and it would be fine up to about here. But it needs hanging. But the flavour that is in there would be absolutely immense compared to a sirloin or a lump. I don't think we've got any flavour. That's my take on it. Right, so we've got that there. That's not bad, is it? 
was the chuck you just reckoned. That was the chuck. He raised his shake. Now, if he's not too in line, they're fairly good. It's probably warm that he'd get a collective if he was at the shop for. But it's tight. I know you guys don't like to touch it, but it's very tight. It's for me to get my finger. And that is, yeah, that is a very, very good cracking job there. Nice bit of fat in the middle. So, that's going to break. Oh, now, this is the big thing at the moment. We've talked about the tomahawk steak. This is, anybody who've heard of Coat de Boeuf? Oh, it's that posh. All the top restaurants are doing it in London. It's not been long before it comes up here. What you do, Stevie, he's done an incredible job here. That would do you two people. That would probably be about 45, 50 quid. Two people. Yes, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Can you see guys? Can you imagine that? Coming to the plate. Some nice French fries, sweet potatoes. And some nice mushy peas. It's a good one. Not even cuisines. They mushy peas and mint sauce. So, here we've got... Uh, and now here's another thing. Has anybody ever heard of steak babette? Yeah, yeah babette. Again, the incredible chef, Jamie Oliver. He's made it popular. We've been doing this at my shop for 15 years. It's a, what it is, on the inside of the animal, you've got all the lungs, the liver, the heart, and the babette is the buffer. So that when that animal's running and stops, that's all held in there. So it's like a thin plank, but it's on the inside of the bone, whereas the thin plank's on the outside of the bone. But again, this isn't hung long enough, but as Steve has just said, you can pull it apart, look, look. It will pull apart, but that needs to hang probably in a lot. Steve, how long do you think? Another 30 days before that. Another 30 days before that, sorry. That's exactly, because he knows this beef's been on for 20 days. So... Right then, so what we've got, we've got, would you like to check that to see if there's anything Chris and it's Steve? So we basically, we've got stewing meat, we've got steak, we've got a thick rib, we've got thin rib, we've got all different ways of doing the meat slow. So whether it's boil it, whether it's do it in the oven, braise it, or whether it's do it on a barbecue, it can all be done from the forequarter. Masses of flavour. Why has it got flavour? Why has it got more fat than the back end, which I will be explaining. Well, I'll explain it now. When the animal starts its journey off, it's on four legs, isn't it? So it starts walking. And the back end just follows it. That's all it does. But then, what does an animal stop itself with, guys? With its front legs, yeah? So all that weight, can you imagine, of nearly two tons on a beast, is stopped by its shoulders. So therefore, its shoulders build up amazingly. That's where all the string and the stress is on its front part of the animal. When it takes off again, when it runs, it's not a problem. It's the back end and the front end work together. But when it stops, that's when all that power is pushed into the front. And if you look on most of the animals, you'll see big shoulders on the males, little shoulders on the ladies, because they're not as testosterone filled, are they? Do you know what I mean? The ladies, that's why I like late, that's why I like the heifer meat. They're not bothered about fighting and showing off in front of the ladies like all you male chefs want to do with the female chefs. They just want to do the job, get through life and have a nice time. Whereas boys, at a younger age, we're like we want to fight, we want to mess with that. That's exactly what's happening in the animal world. So all they're doing is rutting to be the top one. Therefore, there's a lot of testosterone through the body, and we don't like that at my shop, because that means the male is going to be tough, because he's a bodybuilder. And it's, where's the lady? It's going to be lovely, soft, tender meat, a little bit more kind of inlay. They just want to, I'm not saying raise of that, but better than the meat. So, and again, can I have some fat, Steve? What we got? Again, we've got some wonderful fat here. If you, anybody heard of beef dripping? Yeah. Some of it's gone, finished. But at one time, most of your probably parents or grandparents would have gone to the butchers, 
Got that mint, took it out, put it in the oven. What do you call? Not melted it. Rendered it down, and they would have had dripping on toast. Or has anybody ever had dripping on toast? Anybody had dripping on toast? What's it like? It's fantastic, isn't it? My parents are Hungarian, hence the name. And if you have pork dripping on toast, we do it with garlic, paprika, a little bit of salt. It is amazing. However, it's another thing that's gone because of the, perhaps, the, the want of us being a more healthy country or a more healthy society, but we're having margarine and things. Stick to that. So, again, say again, it's still fat. It is, but it's fat that's not been messed about with. Yeah? It's fat that's pure. It's fat that's not saturated. So, look at that. Again, at the shop, we display it so that it breaks the different colours up. We had Stevie. Actually, no, you wasn't here, was you? You was with Quest. I was with him when, I don't know if you've ever heard of the gentleman, Joe Smith. No, Joe Smith was here in my day in, it was the early 80s, late 70s. And he was the guy who put, started entering me in competitions. Because I was saying to him, we're very condensed at my shop. So I was doing all this at the age of 14, whereas most butchers was only allowed to do a shin of beef because it's expensive. Uh, so when I came here, that's, this is where I learned my sort of trade, and Joe Smith put us in for quite a few competitions, and I did very well. I won quite a lot for him. And it was the fear of having different thinking outside the box. As a chef, you've got to do that. Uh, uh, do any of you do development? Are any of you told... Use your own brain, think of something. Yeah? No, they're just told to do exactly what we think. Yeah, but that... tasks in some lessons, isn't it? Sam, Sam, that is fantastic. We have to have, we have to have stability throughout. I, when I worked at my butcher shop, and Steve's done it, and Joel's done it, first thing he does when he comes in the morning is puts the kettle on, for me or for Steve. Steve did it for me. I did it for Mr. Beedham. My second job was to go out to the back and clean the toilet every morning. And what this becomes is habitual. It's a habit. And so, that when the health people come to my shop, everything's immaculate. Job does it. I still do it, guys. It's not something that's... And then what I'll say to Joel is, Joel, I want you to come up with a new idea. Joel, come up with the mushy pea and mint sauce sausage. He invented that. Steve come up with a chicken jerky. We do a chicken jerky sausage that is to die for, which is the best. Mm. Jerky. Jerky. See, straight back, both of them. They're like, this is the best, because that's what they're passionate about. We have another guy at the shop who's come up with an amazing burger. We all have to think outside the box, because if everybody goes into town who's doing a breakfast, does a fried breakfast, where do you choose? But if somebody's doing bright fried breakfast, that's made their own sausage pate, guess what? I'm going there, because I want to try what that lad's done. And it's no different here. What Stevie's doing now is doing some beautiful stew. I think that's too lean, but that's what a lot of you want. And again, even with a stew look, if I push it, it's going to come through. It's breaking down because it's been pumped. What we're going to do, we're coming to the end of this now, what we're going to do is have a break, uh, we're going to tidy up, then we're going to get the hindquarter done. Do you guys, are you guys interested in this, is it? Yeah. 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 What I want you to do is go back home tonight, all of you have got a computer, go online and see butchering being broke up. Because this is just, <laughs> we've just tickled the service here. You can turn all this into different products. And um, as you, as being a caterer, should be allowed to have a sirloin or a lump steak and be working with it. You should be doing that. It's not just about cooking, it's about knowing the, the process that goes behind it. Ladies and gentlemen, have a break and we'll see you back. When you saw today, they're all sitting quietly watching. Uh, it's hard to control some of the groups like that, but um, obviously when Johnny comes in, he's industry professional. We can show him so much butchery, but we're not butchers, we're chefs. So for them to see a whole animal which we can't get in a college, 
and then Johnny comes and does that then they're just transfixed and some of them then want to go to butchery you understand the importance of good butchery going into the industry um, so for us it's invaluable we can't we can't teach that to Trey how important it is um, especially when Johnny puts emphasis on the farm to butcher to restaurant it's the whole chain of how something comes on the plate and that's invaluable for us